So good day everyone. Um, welcome to week number 20 in 2019. Um, I'm moderating this uh, product call of the Eternity Network and Universe live from Liechtenstein. And um, yeah, I think this is an extremely special um, week for um, all of us, um, also because um, um, the, the voting ended and the second migration phase, we are now in the last migration phase, um, meaning that um, more than 70% of all AE tokens migrated from, um, from the Ethereum Eternity token to the Eternity mainnet already. And um, yeah, we have an upcoming hard fork. Um, we got the results from the block reward initiative, which where the community um, voted for 10.9% um, block reward share, um, more than 4.2% of all token um, holders um, participated. I think this is a great number compared to um, what we see in happening in governance, also in, in other projects, maybe like Aragon or so, which they had peaks um, with maybe 8% or so. Also, um, large quantity token holders um, or people who have a little bit more of the, the eternity establishment itself did not participate. Um, also, um, the foundation did not participate in the voting itself, so it's a we could say it's a quite representative um, thing from people who care about um, the, the future um, of, of eternity. And um, uh, I would like to give the first word to Pivo because he was um, mainly coordinating the, the voting app and um, also now published a script so people can verify. Please, Pivo, um, tell us a few things about this and also about um, um, the other things that you are overlooking right now. So for the block reward share voting, what we did is, um, you know, in the last week, we did verify our voting scripts over and over so that they do the right thing. Also with multiple developers, we did have a look over it. We published two versions of the script, two versions for Ethereum count and eternity counting to use multiple data sources. Uh, as input to make sure that we get the same results from any data source, so from the middleware and from standalone uh, full nodes. Um, and then we, after the vote was finished, we did a verify or did look while the last blocks were incoming that, for example, uh, everything was going on correctly, so it closed at the correct height and um, no transactions were left in the manful, so the miners were not playing around with it. And um, the uh, publish, we did publish the voting results with the source data and the GitHub repository in the written update. I will include a link for this. And I encourage everybody to verify these results that they are actually correct. This is quite easy. You will have to have Node.js installed clone the repository, and then run our script, verify uh, shell script, uh, and it prints the results, and you can check if they are the same ones we published. They, they should be. Um, the other things I worked on, or did work on this week, were the website demo, so me and another developer did a demo on, uh, that we may publish on the website where you can do spend transactions in a really simple way. So the idea is to have multiple layers. First is a presentation layer where you just have a button and the input field, so spend here and there, which triggers the transaction on the Eternity testnet to showcase. Like, it's that easy. This is the really low latency that we have. With this. A very few seconds of latency until the transaction is included in the blockchain. Um, and then there's some explanation of what's happening here, um, how does this work, and then uh, developers can go in and see how is the code written for this, just a very few lines of JavaScript, and they can also tinker with it. So there's basically a sandbox for developers that shows how easy it is to implement that. You can change some variables or code like a very small script around it. The future for this is that we optimize the demo experience and we 
and make iterative work on these showcases to also showcase other examples. For example, the naming system and the oracles, maybe an uh, example for state channel, and that we just built a toolbox around uh, public demos. The last thing I do work on is the LXC SDK, uh, where we move forward from the updates over the last two weeks that we finished the implementation of the naming system um, APIs, finished the work on the Oracle system APIs. We did some fixes on gas and fee calculation, and we uh, have some options to override default values there. And when there's contract calls, we automatically uh, decode the return data using the um, ACI from the compiler, which is quite useful for developers. Uh, the, the main thing that's really cool about the LXC SDK compared to the others is that we directly use the um, Erlang functions from the core node. For example, we directly include the compiler there. And so we can have really low latency in some of these executions because we only have to do one HTTP call to the node that we talk to. And yeah, the, the future plan for the, this is that we build our, our way to a first release and um, have this in the next or upcoming weeks. Thank you. Thanks a lot, people. <clears throat> That's quite some updates for one week um, uh, uh, coming from, from your corner. Um, yeah, thank you very much for, for the work. Um, also, please pl pass it by to all the people you, you work with uh, directly, as it's like, like a lot. And we are also doing those calls, so um, not only um, people from the community know what's happening, but also that um, everyone who is in the call here can listen to this, can reach out and uh, maybe contribute um, and, and, and just be aware what is happening because it's sometimes, or it's get also getting harder and harder to follow every and each corner um, of, of, um, of this uh, decentralized network. Um, um, like the results from the voting and also um, the results from the token migration, meaning the, the tokens that got burned on Ethereum or sent to the smart contract, um, are now getting in, in, um, prepared for um, the Fortuna release. So, Sergey, how are we there? How, how does um, everything in the protocol look um, for the upcoming release? So, two most important things, right on time, right on schedule. So, as we're talking now, we are preparing the release candidate of the uh, Fortuna release. So, let's let take a 300RC1, which includes basically almost all of all the API breaking changes which we have planned for this release. So if you use APIs, please, especially some WebSocket APIs or state channels, please check the readme release notes of this release. Make sure that you're aware and your application is aware of those changes. It's only, only APIs which were deprecated in the previous release affected, so there shouldn't be no unexpected breakages that were announced before. Also, all the consensus breaking changes are in place. So, also the uh, the results of the of the of, of the latest vote are also merged. So, the other things which will affect consensus and left are the results of the migration. So, token migration is still on the way. On the way. So, as soon as it's done, the results will be also included into the master and will be the part of three zero zero. So the final release is planned to be released on the, the next week and then two weeks to test it and to make sure that everything is working and I think around the fifth, approximately so June, the hard work should take place. And the test that notice, the test that should hard fork uh, around in the night between of, at night from Sunday to Monday, so I think around 3 a.m. Central European time. So, and then the next release is coming. We're still looking for the nice name, so yeah, drop your suggestions. Perfect.
Cool, thanks a lot, Sergey. So it's still also time for everyone who's interested on protocol level. Um, you can look into um, also the code um, um, areas. Um, I will share this later in the written update. Um, for example, where the BRI got implemented and, and maybe things that um, people would like to like verify or, or look into or see how it was um, implemented and coded. I, I have a few links here, which I will also share um, with the blog post in the forum. And yeah, great. Thanks, uh, Sergey, for, for this update. And hopefully uh, we stay on track uh, like, like planned also for the upcoming weeks. And um, now, uh, because um, changes in the protocol means changes also in, in the SDKs, um, and, uh, and and lots of work in updating here. So, Andrea, um, how is it with um, in, in comparison to the to the upcoming Fortuna? How do the SDKs look like, and um, what is currently on your plate? Yes. So uh, we have released uh, yesterday um, the JavaScript SDK that is compatible with uh, Fortuna. Uh, the Python SDK uh, is uh, in the process of being released, and so we are going to be we are uh, ready to support the new uh, version already for the um, deployment in, in testnet. It's going to happen later today, and they are fork on the, uh, Monday. Also, we, um, as you maybe have you can see, we have a lot of uh, tests planned for uh, the, this print and mostly because we are going to uh, dedicate our time to make sure that the transition is as smooth as possible with the uh, Fortuna release. Um, the other thing that we are planning to do uh, for uh, in this print anyway is to uh, besides the following the Fortuna release is to uh, improve uh, on the documentation side and in the release process to uh, avoid the uh, uh, SDK breaking changes if it's not uh, extremely necessary or be more uh, um, precise when, when uh, communicating these breaking changes. That's it. That's all from my side. Great. Good to hear, and also cool that we that we are already um, on track here with the with the SDK. That's that's pretty good, and uh, um, yeah, people can actually then hands on play around with the upcoming release, which is nice. Um, also, I I would like directly go to John. He's just sitting next to you, and um, John, what, what is what is on on your side? Has what has news on the middleware? So I've been on holiday for most of the last week, so I don't have terribly much to report today. Uh, in the last couple of days I've been back. I have completed the smart contract function support so that now you can see the return value from a contract as well as the function that was called and the arguments. So we'll get full reporting for smart contracts. And I'm completing the deployment onto a new server, which should cause the middleware to be much faster and much more reliable. So I'll be completing that at the beginning of next week and also making a alpha version, which people will always be able to access to get the bleeding edge functions. Fantastic. Thanks a lot for this update. And um, I think also um, AirGap um, is, uh, is or ha has been using the middleware or parts of it and also like new updates are coming here. So Andreas, I see you in the call again. Welcome. Um, please uh, give us a few words uh, on, on your development. Okay, so uh, yes, we had a lot of progress this week. We continued working on the wallet upgrade to Ionic 4. This is almost completed. We also added some small features like showing pending transactions um, that should be ready um, to release next week. We also started with the vault update to Ionic 4 in parallel. Um, then we also submitted two AEXs, AEX 7, and uh, that is concerning data serialization, and AEX 8, that is concerning message signing. So you could all take a look and give us feedback there. They are still in a very early draft phase. Um, regarding the Chrome extension, we there were some delays because uh, uh, yeah, some, we noticed some issues, but we have actually published 
a release today and we will later announce it in the forum as well. And we also published um, the test page that um, I'm not quite sure who wrote it. It wasn't us, but we deployed it publicly to um, GitHub pages so people can test the Chrome extension just uh, by clicking a button. And uh, I would like to thank Pika because she also included the AirGap resources like the CoinLib into the docs. Great. This is really good to hear. And um, also thanks a lot for submitting this A access. I think this is uh, extremely important for the future of the whole eternity ecosystem that we get more and more ideas out there um, that we can discuss and also um, yeah channel a little bit our resources if we come to an uh, effort with human governance uh, first of course like agreeing on those things and then um, developing and implementing um, standards uh, step by step um, but I will not go to Emil now, and, but jump to one of our next uh, to, uh, uh, wallets, uh, base wallet, which is overlooked by, by Stoyan. And then later we will for sure get a few updates from Emil too. So Stoyan, please tell us a few things about the development on the, the base app sites. Yeah, sure. So we uh, successfully did the first release from our new uh, release format, which is every two weeks. Um, I have a link that I can place in the chat. You can see what made it to the final um, list of things. Um, everything worked out well for that format. We're already planning the next one, which is uh, about 12 days. And um, that release was mostly like fixes and bug fixes, and there's some small security issues that we resolved. So it's, there's not a ton to share in terms of functionality. Uh, one thing that we like that we, it's a functionality fix that we did is like right now we have a very clear indicator when uh, the user is, uh, doesn't have internet or if they're connected to a testnet or if um, they have internet but um, the node that they input it will not connect or they cannot connect to a node. So I think that's very important from a user perspective. Uh, we were also as part of this uh, Ending last sprint and starting a new one, we've already set our priorities for the, uh, the sprint spring. We uh, are estimating the issues right now and uh, populating the list. Uh, all of this stuff is very easily accessible for anyone to see uh, on GitHub. Uh, I'll also place that link because we have a milestone tag to see a little bit of the um, Aside from that, we, uh, we collected some user input. Um, from external testing iOS and Android, so we're uh, um, and we incorporated already some of it, um, and so we're ready to submit for uh, public release on those two platforms. So we're going to do this uh, in the next few days. And um, what else? Um, oh, and I also. Uh, I would encourage people um, to join to join the Telegram group if you might specifically for their base app um, to give their feedback. Also, you could share if if you're not the person who may want to provide feedback, but you have someone that would be interested, please refer them to the Telegram group or the forum post. Um, and yeah, we're uh, excited about this regular release schedule. Uh, and we in in this community, we have more. Uh, functionality we're adding and more stuff that's kind of uh, that the users can see because in yeah, this past one there was so much of uh, fixes that we had put on hold and so we're going to go to So uh, yeah, that's it. Cool, great. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Stoyan. And um, uh, I'm, I will also personally uh, send some screen recordings into this Telegram group of, of, of little UX and UI stuff. I, I discovered I'm actually a heavy user of the base app. Um, because whenever I'm, I'm, I'm running around, I also use it as a reference often or now with the whole voting um, 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 procedure, it was also nice to, um, to see and I want to point it out one more time, all those different approaches of um, voting with the ledger, voting, uh, connecting the base, uh, the, your mobile base up to the desktop, and like there are many, many things that already um, work quite nice and of course they're not yet heavily used, but um, um, I think we're making good progress here um, in, in, in 
proposing and suggesting different ways of interacting um, with um, yeah, decentralized applications and not only making uh, transactions of tokens. Yeah, so thanks a lot um, for that work and with, with the team also pass the um, always pass the feedback and the stuff you, you, you hear here in those calls to them. Um, and uh, I'll jump to Milan, um, who, who is um, working on the browser extension. I saw in my brave that there is now a big beta sign <laughs> that popped up. <laughs> so I got some visual, visual feedback that that stuff changed. So please uh, give me some insights or okay, ask. So, uh, hi guys. Uh, this week I have been, uh, uh, there was a second beta release of the wallet extension. Um, basically in this release it's affected all of the feedback collected from the last week for the UI and UX improvements and a few other stuff that I have noticed. Uh, also this week I have updated the SDK used after the release of the new version of the SDK and now the wallet is using the key store format that was uh, implemented in the, in the SDK. Also a few things in the web pack are changed and uh, basically development side it's around this. Um, we discussed with Stoyan for merging the wallet and the base app uh, into a single repository. So the last two days I'm uh, basically reviewing and building from uh, the GitHub repo the base app and uh, trying to build it as an extension to see where things are gonna break or how things are uh, are gonna like go, what to expect and what uh, not, so I can have a high overview and then discuss how to proceed. Uh, also, the the wallet extension has a, re a release schedule as well, so we'll try to follow the base app and the release every two weeks now. And yeah, actually, I added this beta sign so users can see that it's still in beta and not uh, like expect uh, stuff not to break. There are a uh, few minor UI improvements as well. There is a uh, indication whether you're on the testnet or on the mainnet and uh, I think that's it. Cool. No, that's good to hear also that you know work closer together. I think this makes a lot of sense. Also, also always keep an eye on the development on the Agap side because I think they also solve lots of uh, stuff uh, really nice and of course if you run into uh, uh, ideas then um, I would like to encourage you to or everyone to go and write an AEX pro proposal on how to standardize things and um, um, yeah so uh, whenever you see something smart where you say hey this should be something everybody should use then um, yeah, for sure also move forward there. Thanks a lot, Milan. And um, I would like to jump to Martin, who, um, um, uh, who's building 4JE, but also um, coordinating a little bit with the team who built the online IDE playground. And yeah, so Martin, please give us some insights about your past week um, of work. Uh, hey guys, so what we have uh, focused last week were some updates of, uh, of the tools. So, for example, we had uh, added some more properties to the history comment of uh, 4G. Uh, we have fixed some issues uh, with deployment and added more uh, user friendly uh, messages and uh, errors uh, for this. Also, uh, we have added the local compiler, standalone compiler. Uh, together with the node in Forge, so you can uh, spawn your own uh, compiler with uh, Forge. Uh, also, we have added some new compiler options to the compiler and deployer command. Uh, we have fixed some uh, course uh, issues that we had with the, the shape commands. Uh, and this is for 4J uh, from the playground. What we have, we have added some new features to the, to the console and have fixed some minor issues uh, and all of these things will be released probably at Monday because today and currently we are working on releasing all of the new tools, all of the tools with the new uh, SDK version so we can support uh, the Fortuna release and so we can be compatible with the testnet uh, nodes which will be uh, hard uh, at, at Monday. 
So actually, this is uh, the updates from, from last week uh, for us. So new releases for all the tools next week, so stay tuned. Cool, great. Thanks a lot, Martin, for the update. And um, as we have heard uh, the expansions like a couple of times today, and uh, Emil is uh, one of the leading hands here. Emil, uh, please give us some insight about the expansions and what's going on there. Yeah, so I'm very happy to see that more and more people joining all the more networks to uh, create standards and they have people expansion that and the expansion for already one is about the data series creation and another is about the standard design messages to um, allow also later on things like log in with eternity and things like that. And um, so what we're um, having, we also have updates and they uh, also in the expansion two, which is communicating the standard and in the way how wallets and apps communicate. And I think this, this since this uh, touches almost everyone who wants to build something on eternity, um, this takes also some time to find a common ground there, but I think this is uh, also worth the effort yeah, to discuss this a bit deeper. And um, so upcoming, we will improve a little bit the structure to have like an index document that makes it easier to navigate through the expansions since we have more and more expansions now. And just the num numbers don't provide much guidance what is behind it, so um, we will improve this a little bit. And, um, Yes, and also update the expansion about uh, the deep linking format to make this more universal. This is almost um, yeah, ready to publish. So that's it. Cool. Thank you. And again, um, I think it's really important to mention that those expansions are uh, a really an extreme important part of the future development um, of this, um, the, the, the whole thing, everything around Eternity, uh, because those standards should help people then later on to, um, yeah, to, to make it better and easier to use uh, all the technology that, that's getting built here. And also to decide on um, what should be built next or what people should focus on. So again, everyone who has an idea or everyone who runs into uh, solutions that he wants to share with everyone, then um, go reach out um, also to Emil, go to the forum, um, open up an expansion. Um, that's, that would be great. Um, okay, cool. So um, uh, also who tries to keep track with everything and get it in the documentation hub is Pega. So Pega, please tell us um, um, what you have added this week and uh, yeah, which updates the documentation hub has. Yeah, so this week um, I've started an initiative with a dedicated post at the forum to collect all community built projects on the eternity because we don't have an appropriate list. So I, I thought, let's start this. And I just started to um, list them each by each um, at the documentation app. But of course, before that, I had the look on them and um, made also some PRs if I saw like little mistakes and I also talked to some of the product owners of those projects to find out the current status of the projects because um, some people were build stuff but there were some breaking changes in the SDK and I don't know I was not sure if they kept um, track with those projects and um, yeah so I also encouraged and motivated some people um, to update um, their projects and um, I think it's also a good motivation if you say hey then you get listed and um, everyone knows about your project so they know it's getting visible so I thought it's a good um, initiative. So besides that um, I've st started to specify a quick start tutorial for the documentation hub which should be mainly ad addressed um, to app developer because the node is running, we have a good core team, so Chief is now um, a lot of um, app developer, so an um, MVP should include an app integration, SDK usage, and writing a smart contract, all in the most minimal and shortest way, let's say. And uh, also good, before I mean, um, this course is helpful um, for the team itself, like for each team itself, because um, after last week's call, Andreas um, from the Airgap project reached me out 
regarding to the documentation hub. And since that, um, I've been in contact with the Airgap team. So I think it's also good just for us, only like the people who are attending this call. So yeah, I just wanted to give um, a compliment. Uh, just Perfect, to happy to hear that and hope we can also grow that um, throughout uh, um, and to, to the ever, ever growing um, satellites. I think also it's a good idea to list um, just to give a direct feedback here to really also this uh, deprecated uh, projects and stuff that that happened like basically everything that's happening in the ecosystem because if someone one is just interested in to, to play around and and look into some code um, um, this can help so if we have a list of resources and, and links that point to different areas um, 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 or especially when it comes to code I think this can help a lot um, and just needs to be marked a little bit. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot for your, for your work. And please, um, everybody, um, reach out to Pega like they, uh, the the Agap team does. Um, so um, we really get everything together. Also, of course, uh, the documentation hub is on GitHub, so you can also just go directly and do PRs if you want to change something or add something. And um, and yeah, this should be like an open open place where we collect everything that's going on and um, this is also one of the first calls where we have um, again some guests from the outside and um, I see for example Philip here from Mpnet. Um, I think it's the first time you're participating. Um, you have been part of one of the first um, Starfleet badges and um, maybe you can give like a, a, a short uh, introduction and then uh, what, what you guys are currently working on. Uh, hi everyone, thank you Emin for introduction, thank you for organizing this call. Um, I'll try to be quick and I'd like to give you a few updates on, on our side. So I have here the list uh, of something I'd like to talk about. So for the start, uh, I'm happy to say that we've managed to rewrite our Solidity code base uh, completely in Sophia. So um, all the features are covered and uh, everything is working as expected. So yeah. Uh, that was that was a great experience. There there were some right. moments, but uh, Philip uh, was Ivo was very helpful. Also the forum, uh, we found some answers on the forum, uh, and yeah, uh, uh, one of the tools that helped us a lot was Core JE. Um, it would be nice to have a zero bot time, but I know that that's something that has to be solved on a protocol level. If if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. And also the uh, dev resources that uh, Milan Ratko uh, published on, on that HackMD URL uh, was quite helpful. I think the statistics of how many times I opened it in the last few weeks would be very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, thank you for all of that. Uh, for now, we are doing some stress testing of the contracts itself. Um, we are wondering uh, uh, how much does the average transaction cost on our platform and how long does it take to, to execute and process it and uh, uh, we've written some frameworks uh, or wrappers where we can ex execute the transactions on our private network uh, which is booted up using the core JE and we can actually see the, the costs in dollars and, and, and the time for processing the transaction and we're very happy with it so it's, it's a lot better than it was before and uh, uh, I hope that it will be the same uh, when we de uh, deploy everything on testnet and in the end, in the end on production uh, network. Uh, also, we had some middleware issues uh, uh, because we, we wanted to use the crypto crowd's uh, Java SDK, but the guys there uh, got stuck with some issues uh, regarding some data types and Swagger documentation, but that was addressed uh, on the forum firstly, and then afterwards the issue was opened on GitHub and uh, uh, there are some interesting proposals on how to handle that problem. Uh, but uh, as far as we are concerned, uh, uh, we might just try to, to write our own middleware uh, using the uh, Node.js SDK. Uh, so uh, I think it's the most advanced one and uh, it has the best documentation. So maybe it will be just the, the best solution to maybe try to, do, to implement everything using the JS SDK and see what happens next. Uh, we also have some uh, kind of our own middleware, which which kind of does something uh, same as the uh, middleware that John uh, and the rest of the crew were working on. 
uh, so uh, but somehow it's specialized for our own use case but maybe we'll just try to to boot up the uh, exist, existing middleware and then try to leverage some functionalities on top of that uh, and try to, to solve our issues. But I expect to, to have the uh, contracts and our own middleware running uh, on testnet by the end of the month and then we'll see where we go next from there. Yeah, so that's Perfect. basically, yeah, thank you. Cool, this is like, I think, lots of new updates from many people who, have, who maybe not even uh, heard about the project yet. Also, if possible, um, uh, you could also share some, some links also if you have things open source already where people can look into. Um, that's also welcome and I'm sure Pega can also include this um, um, and, and point to it through from the documentation so that we really slowly grow our, our, uh, our, our database of uh, projects that are, um, that are flowing around and also again all, um, uh, you, can, you are welcome to reach out to, to John or, or anyone here um, um, or from the teams um, if, you, if you run into problems or would like to just discuss an idea. Um, yeah, thank you for participating and I hope to see you here more often uh, on Fridays. Um, I see one more person in the call and um, I don't know if you, if you would like to voice, then this is the time to, uh, to say a few words. I unfortunately cannot read your name because uh, I'm not good in acrylic. Um, if not, um, I would uh, like to close this call here. Um, thank you everyone for participating and also um, already two weeks passed, so if you could write a few bullet points um, in written form so people could catch up there. Also include a couple of links to the resources um, or whatever links you think are interesting to see and then please do so and um, I will collect all these and publish them in the forum um, uh, like, like the past time. And yeah, I wish everyone a great weekend and uh, latest uh, see you all in person again next Friday. Thank you, bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 bye.